Finley. Welcome you to Carter Finley Stadium, Raleigh, North Carolina, this afternoon on a beautiful October day. Marshall's Thundering Herd and the North Carolina State Wolfpack settle things on the football field in their sixth all-time meeting. It's a matchup that started back in 1991. Marshall taking on Power 5 opponent NC State out of the ACC. It's a series the Wolfpack has dominated. These guys, great. Today, the Herd looking for another statement win on the road. The Thundering Herd versus the Wolfpack. Free game show starts right now. Everybody, I'm Keith Morehouse alongside Jimmy Tracy, and we welcome you to the home of the Wolfpack. Jimmy, a very significant non-conference matchup here this afternoon. That's right, Keith. The Marshall at the end of the game with a 4-0 record. Got some folks in the latest USA Today coaches poll. You got to think if they win today, the AP might take notice and get some votes there as well. NC State played here last Friday night. They lost to Louisville, and they're now 3-2. and two. All right, we've got a lot to talk about in the next hour from Raleigh, including a big move by NC State coach Dave Doran at his quarterback position. The player who started the first five games is out. His sophomore backup is in his QB ones. We will also profile one of Marshall's favorite sons, a guy who's been fiercely loyal to the program and an opposing menace for the opposing offenses. Just what it is that makes Owen Porter tip. And red and green can mix right here on that North Carolina State's campus. Some familiar faces to herd fans as we reintroduce you to two hoops coaches. Remember their time fondly in Huntington. All that and more in the next hour. Jimmy, we are in one of the uh, great venues in all of uh, the Atlantic Coast Conference, Carter Finley Stadium. Uh, it's the backdrop. It was built back in 1966. It's been upgraded to its current capacity. More than 56,000 people it sits. It's been the home of the Wolfpack and hosted some legendary rock and roll bands. Holy moly, look at this lineup. The Who, Pink Floyd, the Rolling Stones, and the Grateful Dead just some of the musical artists who played here. This will be Marshall's fifth visit to Carter Finley. Some of the great players have also been on this field. Former Herd head coach Jim Donnan played quarterback in the 1960s, and future Hall of Famer Philip Rivers holds most every NC State passing record. And Jimmy wide receiver Torrey Holt became a Super Bowl champion with the greatest show on turf with the St. Louis Rams. And Bradley Chubb, a 2018 first round draft pick of the Denver Broncos. Coast. The herd players say they love the big game atmospheres and the big crowds. You feed into it, and then when you guys play well, you let them know about it. Is there some of that too? Just a little bit. I mean, I feel like I'm more of a rah rah guy than, than OP is a little bit. So, I mean, I'm not. I don't turn a blind eye to the crowd. I actually like to like take it in a little bit. Honestly, if I hear a little bit of slander on the sideline, that just turn me up a little bit more. So, I enjoy it. So what to make of this matchup? Marshall's come out of the gates beating Albany and then negotiating a pretty tough out-of-conference schedule and racked up wins at East Carolina, home to Virginia Tech, before opening conference play with a win at Old Dominion. Meantime, the Wolfpack was picked to finish fourth in the preseason ACC poll. They beat UConn, then got handled by three touchdowns by Notre Dame right here in Raleigh. They easily took care of VMI before starting conference play with a win over Virginia and a loss on Friday night to Louisville. Now, let's look a little closer at this coaching matchup. Marshall's Charles Huff is in his third season at Marshall, and he's notched a couple of big-time non-conference wins. The one last year at Notre Dame and just a couple of weeks ago against Virginia Tech at Edwards Stadium. Wolfpack coach Dave Dorn is in his 10th year in Raleigh, and he came into the season with 72 wins. That's the third best in school history. Both coaches should ample respect for each other's programs. This will be the toughest team we will play um, all year. Based on what I've seen in film, I haven't had a chance to watch the other teams in the conference, so I can't say um, that they are or are not um, better than NC State. But as far as what we've seen, um, they're going to be tough. We're going to take it one week at a time. And this week's all about finding a way to beat the next team, which is Marshall, an undefeated team, a team that has very athletic quarterback, talented runners, uh, their running back's a, a dynamic player. The receivers are always skilled. We've played Marshall and, and watched them for a long time. Know several of their coaches got a lot of respect for how hard they play. 
this week. A little bit of a roster news out of Raleigh, to say the least. Yeah, because Dave Duran was not happy with his offensive production, so that usually means a quarterback switch, and that's exactly what he did on Sunday afternoon. Two, on uh, that day, Duran announced that this year's starter, Brennan Armstrong, would be relieved of his duties. Armstrong was a University of Virginia transfer and thrown only five touchdowns against six interceptions, and the offense averaging just 20 points per game against FBS competition. So in comes sophomore MJ Morris. He got some good playing time last year, completed 52 of 86 passes, 648 yards and seven touchdowns with only one interception. Had three TD passes and a win over Virginia Tech. And he's a dual threat guy who can run and throw. Like Devin Lear, like Brennan Armstrong, like them boys always told me to stay ready because you never know when your time is going to come. So even when I'm not in, even in the film room, I'm always preparing like I'm a starter. When I go home, I'm watching the film like I could play because, like I said, like it's one play away. You never know when that time is going to come. So I just always waited, stayed patient, and just was ready. So I'm always ready when my number's called. You know, change, it's, it's college football, it's competitive. You know, it's a competitive thing. So, you know, change is kind of something you just see in, in, in college. It's not really, I wouldn't really consider somebody doing bad or somebody doing, it, it's, just, it's college football, you know, just like the NFL, it's, it's competitive. We've watched a little bit of plays from him from last year, uh, whenever he got to come in and play some. Um, but at the end of the day, we're in the same, same style of defense, I'm sure. Um, they're both kind of similar quarterbacks. They both can run. I think this kid's a little better runner than the uh, kid that played the last couple of games, but we're all in all, we're just ready to roll. Meantime, Cam Fancher has quietly gotten the job done since uh, taking the starting job at Marshall last season. The sophomore has completed 80 and 125 passes for 890 yards and four touchdowns with four picks. He started seven games as a freshman, and the herd has won six of them. Four starts this year and he's now uh, 10 and 1 as QB1. Okay, we can take a quick break, but as you see behind me, the fans are uh, getting uh, pretty packed here at Carter Finley Stadium. A lot of red and green like Christmas in October. Yeah, they still have plenty of time. What, 55 minutes or so before game time? When we come back, we'll check in with Taylor Eaton and the tailgate scene here in Raleigh. Welcome you back to Raleigh, North Carolina, getting you cranked up for the big game, which means, of course, Jimmy tailgating, right? Yeah, they've been here uh, all day long. They've uh, actually RVs parked. They're probably here all football season long. They don't move uh, for the next probably three or four months. You know, of course, NC State fans know how to tailgate. Marshall fans uh, like to equal that task. They uh, get here early, mixed with the uh, football enemy of the day. And that's where Taylor Eaton and Andrew Colbert are right now, right across the way over the uh, PNC Arena with some hurt fans. Hey guys, giving you a look at the tailgate scene happening here. Lots of Marshall fans have made this trip to be here for this big game today. And the cheerleaders and the dance team are here with us getting this crowd hyped up and ready to take on NC State, the Wolf Pack. Girls, thank you so much. We got Marco back there too as they keep leading the crowd in a couple of chances of getting everybody ready. I've got Andrew Kilgrove manning the camera for us. We're going to work our way kind of in between some of these fans. Look at everybody that's turned out here today. This is incredible. Guys, thank you. And look at this. Rob Johnson even here making an appearance. And I hear this is maybe a family divided. Is that what I hear, right, Rob? <laughs> it's a problem. This is my niece, Jacqueline Bear Wisnant, who uh -oh. is, who WSAZ viewers will know as Boz Johnson's granddaughter, my <laughs> niece. NC State color. Um, go ahead, Jacqueline. Tell That's her right. your background. I did go to NC State. NC uh, State grad. Go Pack. Right. And <laughs> a little bit of you, though, because oh. of Boz that always still works for her. Absolutely. I do love some green. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a fun story. Well, I enjoyed seeing you, Rob. I'm not going to make you work because oh, you do I'm that enough. Say this week. in front of her. Go herd. <laughs> I'll say it too. Go herd. <laughs> You all enjoy the game. Thank you. Rob, I'll probably see you in a little bit and back at work on Monday. Let's go talk with a few other fans, though, see that, who we can find here. I'm going to talk over here with Lori, Lori Martin joining us. She's been here from the beginning for this big tailgate. Lori, it's great to talk with you. Tell me a little bit about your involvement with Marshall. Well, my involvement is I'm the president of the Marshall Alumni in Big Green in Parkersburg, West Virginia. Okay. So we go to every home game. We have a bus we take for our chapter to tailgate and, and uh, love being here. 
Have you been to any other NC State Marshall matchups? I know there have been five before this. Have you seen any before this one? Well, last year we went to the Notre Dame game, oh. which was amazing. That's, it's hard to top that one, right? Well, let's let's keep our fingers crossed for today. <laughs> well, Lori, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. I know you all made the trip to be here today, and we appreciate you being a part of our coverage. Let's see who else that we can find here to talk with everyone. Let me see if I can grab really quick here. I'm going to see if I can grab the athletic director, Christian Spears, live on the air with our WSAZ viewers. It is so good to see you. Yeah, how about this in Raleigh, North Carolina? Here we go. And what a crowd you've got here at this tailgate. We went for it today. Look at this tailgate setup. Man, Marshall people care, right? <laughs> and so we sold 3,000 tickets, and they're all here, and we're excited that they joined us. And what I found by being down here, you've got a really big alumni base right here in the Raleigh-Durham area. We really area. do. So many people had just a short commute over to the stadium today. I met a great person out in the parking lot, split families, right? So some of the family went to NC State. She was proudly wearing her Marshall gear. It was awesome. Well, I, I just found that with our own yeah. Rob Johnson. That's the case with his family here today, right. too. Talk about this game today. It, it's a very meaningful matchup between these it two is. teams. And I know they played five times before right. NC State has dominated the 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 previous games and, and the series between the two. But how do you feel about the team heading in today and, and maybe the yeah. outcome of this one? Yeah, not many people have done what we're doing, right? We're playing two ACC teams in the same season, a couple of weeks apart. You know, we got Virginia Tech at home, and now we get to play NC State in their own backyard. And if we win this game, what that'll mean for our community to be 5-0 and and what it does for our national prominence, too, to beat two ACC schools, one on the road. So it just puts a stake in the ground on who we are and why we're special. And, and man, I hope the result comes out today for, our, for Marshall. Well, you've got quite the turnout. A sea of green here with yeah, you today. Athletic Director Christian Spears joining us live. Thank, Thank you. you so much. We appreciate yeah, it. Peace and good will. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Keith, Jimmy, that is going to do us for us for now. I'm going to send it back to you all, but we're going to chat with a few others here because a lot of these these fans that have turned out here have very special stories about their connections with Marshall University. Many of them making the trek down here because this is the closest road game that they're going to have as part of the season this year. And also a lot of them not really having to drive far uh, because many of them live in this area now. So we're going to check in with a few of them here in just a few minutes. We'll send it back over to you, too. All right, thanks, Taylor. You and Andrew, enjoy yourselves over there until we come back again, right? Yeah, no doubt. Uh, let's get to the two teams playing today. How did the Herd and Wolfpack get here? First, Marshall. They had to dig themselves out of a big hole last week against ODU to get their fourth victory of the year. Last Saturday in September was hotter than normal, and so was Old Dominion. A team that just beat Texas A&M University at Commerce 10-9 erupted on the hurt in the first quarter and change with three big time touchdowns of 66, 19, and 70 yard scoring plays. Even down 21 to 3, the hurt says they weren't phased. But we never really felt like we were down 21-3. We just felt like we were missing some opportunities. And I think again, that's the process, focusing on us. You know, is what they're doing um, you know, defeating us, or is it something we're not doing? And even when they came to the sideline, we're not executing. Um, so the mentality or the mode on the sideline was never, you know, we're, we're 21 to 3. It was we got to execute. Marshall scored the final 14 points of the half on a Cam Fancher to Cade Conley score. Then Fancher to Caleb Coombs. And just like that, the halftime lead was just four. First drive of the third quarter, Marshall, in fact, takes the lead on this Rasheen Ali touchdown. He had two on the day. But this next sequence of events was huge for the herd. Cam Fancher would lose the football. Wayne Matthews picks it up and is heading for the end zone. But guess who makes the touchdown-saving tackle? The Marshall quarterback. Yeah, at the end of the day, uh, I made a mistake. <clears throat> I had to make up for it, at least make the tackle and give the defense a chance and give them a chance to... Uh, Definitely showed up big. That hustle play was rewarded by maybe the biggest play of the game. From the 15-yard line, Jack Shields is picked off by Elijah Alston, who returns it 85 yards for the touchdown. Marshall goes up 10. He didn't really, like, throw the ball the way I thought he was going to throw the ball to the running back, but he, like, floated a little bit. I was like, oh, it's in the air for too long. I'm like, I'm going <laughs> to go do what I got to go do. I grabbed it. It was down the sideline. And they were able to hold off the Monarchs, who cut it to a one-score game twice down the stretch. 41-35 was the final. And that was Marshall's 
ninth straight win over the last uh, two years. Quite a run. As for the Wolfpack, Jimmy, uh, they've been very good at home. They've won 17 of their last 20 home games. There'll be about 60,000 people in there this afternoon. But as for the Herd players, they've been in big venues before. They say they will not be intimidated. It, there's no difference. I mean, like, I think Trent said it himself. Like, the transfer portal has made everything completely different. And even without the portal, they got dudes in the locker room, like, like studs. Like, we got guys that can play with the best of them. So, I'm not going to turn a blind eye to the fact that we're playing NC State. It's going to be a, um, a nice crowd, you know, great environment. And like I said before, this is a moment that we live for as college athletes to be able to go out here and um, go against the best and play good on good. So, um, definitely looking forward to it, but the approach is going to be the exact same. Uh, I mean, it's not normally something I ever really notice other than, like, you come out for a uh, coin toss. Uh, you kind of see it whenever you come out of the tunnel, and then as soon as the game starts, it just kind of narrows that. I don't even notice that they're out there. Uh, they lost to the Hokies about eight days ago, so coaches and players never like to come in off a loss. They'll be ready to go this afternoon. No doubt. They also lost to Louisville last week as well as NC State here. Now, coming up, did you know Owen Porter's first sport wasn't football? You don't want to miss this one. We're back. campus here in Raleigh. We are back just about 40 minutes from game time, Jimmy. Crowd's starting to get uh, fired up. Oh, no doubt. Just a reminder, you can catch the game right here on the CW beginning at 2 o'clock between Marshall and NC State. All right, we talked about one of the subplots this week was the quarterback change at NC State. They've got mobile quarterback MJ Morris versus a Marshall defense that loves to get after the quarterback. Marshall is second in the nation in team sacks this year, 16 in four games. The national leader is Tennessee, 4.4 sacks per contest. The chief harassers on defense, defensive lineman Owen Porter and Sam Burton with three apiece. And speaking of Owen Porter, what a name he's made for himself on the defensive line at Marshall over the past few years here in Huntington. The former Spring Valley star has become an alpha dog on the defensive unit. But quick as he is on the pass, rust, and sack, he's just as quick with those one-liners. It took two seconds for Owen Porter to sack another quarterback. And many times, that long to get another one of his memorable quotes. We're good. They're good. Yeah, we don't care. Spot the ball. The passion for the game is easy to see for the Wayne County native, one that developed while trying out another sport as a kid. So I played soccer as a kid, and <laughs> I got in trouble for a clothesline on a kid on the soccer field. And so my dad was like, yeah, maybe we should try football now. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, after four or five years of playing soccer, I ended up playing football and never looked back. Ever since he arrived on campus, Porter has been popular with fans and media folks alike. A player who tells it like it is and doesn't mince words. Like this moment at Notre Dame just over a year ago. It's not that nice. <laughs> and boy, does he back it up. I'm locked into the things that I got to know, so... Especially on the defensive front, uh, being an older guy, having a lot more experience. We just go into a situation with logic. This is what's got to be done. This is the result that they need. we got to find a way to get it done. Nobody cares about how we get it done. It just has to be done. So I feel like we respect each other in that aspect. And that's just somebody I love to go out there and, uh, and fight with. I know he's going to give me everything he got, and he could expect the same from me. While at the mic, Porter shows a quiet confidence about his game. One head coach, Charles Huff, noticed years ago that this was a guy who gets it and he wishes he had more of them. I think not only myself, but I think this Huntington community is going to talk about Owen Porter for, for a really long time. And I'm amazed every day because he keeps going. It's kind of like, okay, the Energizer Bunny is going to stop at some point, and he doesn't. Um, he, he loves this place. He loves playing football. He loves his teammates. Um, I wish we had 100 of them. I mean, I guess that was the goal. I'd like to be remembered with Benny and, and BJ and all those guys and, and Street specifically. And, uh, I mean, from being from here, it just means a little bit more. Yeah, he's 
not just a fan favorite, but we in the media sure gravitate to him a lot. I told him the other day, I said, I know you don't like him, you're good at it, so keep doing it. Hopefully we'll get to talk many more times with Owen Porter. The North Carolina State defensive front is a force in its own right this year. Wolfpack rush defense is ranked 18th in the country, giving up a paltry three yards per carry and fewer than 100 yards per game. Running against this group seems like an uphill climb. Um, defensively, I don't know if they're going to let us off the bus, so we're going to have to get to the stadium before them um, because they may blitz the bus driver, um, and, and they're, they're good. Um, they do not give up a lot of rush yards. They do not give up a lot of points, um, and they play with a lot of passion and energy. They fly around. They've got really good players. And this is probably the best rushing uh, prevent defense we're going to see all year. Um, you know, they got explosive playmakers, really big uh, Bigger guys up front, strong, athletic, physical, and we're just going to accept that challenge and you know run with it. Time to catch our breath, not for long. When we come back, we'll explain how one play can make a huge difference in a football game. We'll do that when we come back to Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. campus here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Jimmy, uh, we've already seen a lot of green here in the tailgate areas getting ready to head into the game. Yeah, we all know herd fans like to mingle no matter where they are, especially on the road. And the tailgate uh, scene outside Carter Finley Stadium, especially today, is very lively. Let's check in now again. Taylor Eaton and Andrew Coldrick. Yeah, guys, a few of those tailgaters already making their way toward you all at Carter Finley Stadium, but we've still got a few of them that are sticking around here with us at this big tailgate, and two of them have very special connections with Marshall University. I'm so so glad to have Matt Lewis and Amy Prestera joining me here to tell me about their relationship with the university. Uh, you all are you're part of a very special alumni group. We tell are, tell yeah. me about that. We're members of the 75 alumni chapter. We've recently formed in honor of the 75 that were on the plane that night. And you said your your grandparents. My were, grandparents, Dr. And this is uh, Glenn Preston perished in the crash as well. So Marshall, very meaningful to you and your family. Very much so. Both of my parents went to school there as well. So. Now, Amy, tell me about uh, you. You also have a connection with yes, my with that. Father Michael Prestera was on the plane crash. Um, he wasn't even supposed to be on the plane, and uh, Lucy Ann's dad gave him a ticket, and so he um, exchanged suitcases in the airport with his kids and went um, to see the team play. And see uh, talk to me. I mean, today a, a big matchup between Marshall and, and, and NC State. And I know you said you all you all try to make it to road games. You have two that are that are always on on your schedule. Yeah. Um, you said you always go to the home opener yep. and the Memorial game. Absolutely. Um, talk to me though about what what you think about today and this atmosphere of being here. We're thinking 34-31 herd. 34-31 is the prediction. Okay. Beautiful right. day for some football here in Raleigh. It is. What what do you think? I think 24-21 uh, Marshall. Obviously, um, it's going to come down to a field goal. I think you all are. I'm, I'm with you. I think this is going to be a, a great game. It's a great atmosphere. God, thank you all so much for, for being a part of our pregame show. We appreciate it. I'll let you all mingle around a little bit more and go enjoy the game. But I know you mentioned, too, and Lucy Ann's probably going to get on to me. But let's see here. Look at this. Lucy Ann, we're live right now on WSAZ. You've got a big day today. Marshall playing NC State, but it's your birthday. Yes, it is my birthday. I am 75. 75 year, years young. Yes. What what would a Marshall win mean for that birthday today? It would be the best birthday present ever since I'm 75, especially in honor of the 75 souls. Now tell me, you, you've made the trip from Huntington. When did you get into town? What What's everything been like for you? I mean, th this is a, a great, great venue that we've got here. I'm going to every away game and I go to every home game. You know, we are Marshall. Once you step on campus, you, you become Marshall's family. Now, as far as road wins go what ones have you witnessed over the years oh gosh well definitely the notre dame game you were there okay yes. and the home games the ones way back when you yeah. know, we first started playing after the play crash well i, those, I know a lot of people say it's hard to top notre dame yeah. but a win here today would be an incredible road win for them yes 
All right. Well, we're hoping that they pull it off for that big 75th birthday of yours today. Lucia, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. She says go herd, by the way, right? She wants a Marshall win for her birthday today. All right. So we've still got a few, as you can see here, though. The tailgate scene is pretty much cleared out. Everybody, I think, really excited for this matchup that we are now just about 30 minutes away from, Keith and Jimmy. But as we make our way over to the stadium, I know we're going to check back in with you two a couple more times. I think we've got a couple students that are hanging around back here that we're going to talk with and a couple former players that you'll get to hear from. We'll be making our way toward Carter Finley for that big game here in just a few minutes with them. All right, Taylor, thanks very much, and uh, enjoy the tailgating scene. It looks lively, as Jimmy said. Now, back to some football matters. You know, one of the quieter guys you'll see on Marshall's football team, or maybe not here, is quarterback Cam Fancher. He's not a fan of the bright lights, doesn't talk a lot. All he does is work and get results. So consider the play in the second half of that Old Dominion game. Jimmy alluded to it in his highlight piece. The herd up 24-21. Fancher attempts to pass in the backfield to Rasheed Ali. It was ruled a fumble. ODU's Wayne Matthews is off to the races, it seemed. But then Fancher tracks him down at the Marshall 14-yard line. Three plays later, Elijah Alston picks off this pass and goes 85 yards, a possible 14-point swing that changed the game. That Fancher hustle play was huge. We all make mistakes, but how do you respond from those mistakes? Cam went down, tackled the guy. Three plays later, Eli Alston probably makes the play of the season so far. Um, but if Cam doesn't get that guy on the ground, they get a touchdown, and who knows how the momentum may swing. Um, so I thought how he responded, you know, to even some of the good stuff he did um, was, was really good. I mean, I think that fired everyone up, honestly. I mean, your, your quarterback, the uh, ball hawks a guy down 70 yards. You know, uh, I think that speaks, you know, miles about what Cam, what, how Cam is as a leader, as, a, as just a person. You know, he's going to give great effort. He, he don't care to sacrifice his body and go make a play. Uh, we're going to take a break, take a quick time out, Jimmy, but a whole lot more to talk about. Yes, when we come back, some don't like to use labels, but this thing is called a group of five team versus a power five team. The Herds more than held its own lately. More after this. Another campus landmark here at NC State. Jimmy, one guy we haven't talked about a lot yet, number 22 for the herd. He's going to be a factor today. Yeah, he didn't play a full season last year because of injury, but boy, he's healthy uh, right now, and I guarantee you, NC State's worried about Rasheed Ali later today. The junior tailback is tied for the national lead in rushing touchdown with nine. Michigan star Blake Corum and George State back down. Marcus Carroll he also have nine each, but Ali has reached that in four games total, and he's the only player in America two rushing touchdowns in every game. Wolfpack, yeah, they know about it. Their running back is a really, really good player. Uh, he's an NFL guy that, you know, he's big, strong, fast. Uh, he's played a lot of football, and you know, so so we have to do a great job of shutting this run game down and making that make it a one-dimensional game, and make him try to throw the ball, and beat us. I mean, there are three front down linemen. I mean, they're very good guys. Uh, they're big, they're fast, they're strong. Uh, they use their hands well. So I mean, it's going to be a test, obviously. But uh, you know, one thing we do good is uh, we we run the ball. So yeah, you take that as a child, huh, Matt? Yes, sir. You may have noticed Tony Gibson there, Jimmy, defensive coordinator here at North Carolina State, a West Virginia native from Boone County, and also a longtime assistant coach at West Virginia. We'll talk about him a little bit later as well. Yeah. Well, first we're going to talk about the, the Herd's recent history against Power 5 teams, beginning with that epic win over number 8 Notre Dame last September 2022. Marshall went into South Bend, Indiana, and used a potent ground game and a sound defense all the way to a 26-21 win at Notre Dame Stadium. One of the biggest wins in school history. Henry Columbia found with Devin Miller for the go-ahead touchdown. And that put the herd up 19-15. Then Stephen Gilmore picked off this pass and then took it the other way as the herd won this thing 26-21. I'll be honest, I think of that game every day. <laughs> All right, speaking of Power 5 games, Jimmy, don't forget a couple of weeks ago, Marshall knocked off Virginia Tech at Edwards Stadium. First win over the Hokies since 1940. Now, with the help of Herd play-by-play -play man Steve Cotton, here's a look back at that one. Marshall University's thundering Herd football team is trying. 
team to beat Virginia Tech for the first time in more than 80 years. Now for Fancher, who takes it on second down and 10. Has good protection. Launches down the right sideline. Three for Blitz on the way, Fancher throws to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown by Harris. Demarcus Harris, his first touchdown as a member of the Thundering Herd. Third goal from the four. Thrones takes it, fakes it, looks right, throws that way to the goal line, and it is incomplete. Broken up, Micah Abraham got a hand in there. We came out and we just had to settle in a little bit. They uh, executed their first drive better than we did. We had a few missed tackles. Um, but after we went to the sideline and we were settled in, we got it together. The snap, they'll give to Ali. He has room, has the first down. 45, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Ali is loose and gone, and he has to. Marshall takes the lead. I just kind of just look at the goal line and just wire in on that and just don't look back and just run. Make him chase you. And he catches the long pass. Most Phillips was back there defensively. Blitz on the way. Fancher throws to the end zone, and it's caught for a touchdown by Harris. First touchdown as a member of the Thundering Herd. Third and goal from the four. Thrones takes it, fakes it, looks right, throws that way to the goal line. Deep motion by Lane. They uh, take the handoff. Lane Taylor in the backfield and wraps up and throws that. Tyler Thrones. Second down and ten from the 28. Thrones takes the snap, fakes the handoff, backs up, and he is sacked by Ty Kleslegs. Drones rolls right. He's going to tuck the run. Drones has room, has the 10 and the 5. Drones left in the, the touchdown zone. for Virginia Tech. Chaka set to Drones. Looks left. He throws it over the middle. And it's broken up incomplete. Josh Moat reached in front of Jalen Lane. He would circle back across the middle. And Marshall takes over on downs. It was 4th and 6. The running back was in the backfield, motioned out to the stack. He was in the back, so you know I'm taking option route. And I just trusted my eyes, trusted my technique, and made a play. Credit to the defense and the coach staff for the play call and everything. Rock rose to zeros. Brown rises and roars. Final score. Marshall 24. I mean, we expect to win every week, no matter who we're playing. In fact, we showed that last year with the Notre Dame game. Um, we don't. We don't label anything P5, Group 5. We don't care. We'll play the freaking Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, it doesn't matter to us. It's football. Football's football. Come back. We're going tailgating again with Taylor and Andrew Colgrove. Kickoff getting closer and closer by the minute. Under 30 minutes, in fact. Tailgating in go mode right now. Welcome back to our pregame coverage of the matchup between the Marshall Thundering Herd and the NC State Wolfpack here outside of Carter Finley Stadium. We've made our way from behind PNC Arena, now we're out here in front. And as you can see, there's a pretty steady stream of red here heading into the stadium. But as fans have been heading in, even the uh, occasional green that we're seeing, everybody's kind of wishing each other good luck because now we're just minutes away from game time. But i got a couple of fans here that have made the trip to be a part of the fun here today. I've got Andrew and Cole Thompson joining me. You all have traveled pretty far, right? You, you all came from, what, Pittsburgh and Cincy? Is that right? Absolutely. Cincinnati. It's a great college town, great sports town, but this is the place to be this weekend. Yeah, you absolutely can't miss it. I drive eight hours. I'm not going to I'm not gonna not going go anywhere else, so got to support the herd. All right. So how, how many road games do you all normally make it to a year? Oh, we're not missing the game. This is, no? this is game, what, two? Game, yeah, yeah, road game two will probably be at uh, another five more the rest of the year, so we're not going to miss any other one. All right. So uh, we know that the, the past five times, that these two these two teams have met that NC State's dominated the series. What are you all thinking today? I mean, what do you think about this team that you're seeing so far for Marshall this year coming in here unbeaten? They have a great defense, but I think we'll be great on offense. We got Rashin Ali, we got Cam Fancher back, so I think we're going to get the win. Yeah, I mean, it comes down. I mean, you heard Huff and his presser. We have 35 P5 transfers. Uh, I mean, we're we're a different team. This is the best team that NC State has seen us since uh, we came here a couple years ago. So we're looking for a good battle. It should be a good one on the field. Now, have you all uh, have you all been here before at Carter Finley when these two teams have played? Have you? Went Witnessed any of those other matchups? Absolutely. We were at the last one, and the teams were leaving by halftime. <laughs> the teams left at halftime, uh, kind of disappointed, and we, we should have finished strong last time, but I think we have to win this time around. Yeah, uh, shout out to Blake Keller, former 
offensive uh, or defensive lineman. He missed a big tackle when we were down. We really needed him to come back, and uh, he missed it. So uh, it's going to be a lot better town on the field. So we hope for uh, to seeing something different and uh, getting a better outcome. Now the the guy that just popped his head in here that gave us a go heard. He played for he played for Marshall, right? He yeah. did. He got his big uh, his big first start was actually NC State back in 2017, I believe. So I, I know he's excited to get this win this time around. Yeah. yeah. It's always good to see uh, foreign players. Alex Millet, shout out to him. He's a great guy. So he uh, he got his first start here. Uh, it should be a different outcome. So we're looking forward to go at five and zero. All right. Before I let you two go, give me predictions for the game. We'll see if you're right after. I got 37-20 Marshall. Okay. Uh, so a couple years ago, that's what the score was, but I'm going a little bit different. I'm going 28-24 Marshall, 5-0. We'll see you uh, next week in Georgia State. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Well, hopefully I can catch up with you all again after the game when uh, hopefully Marshall gets that big win, right? Let's go, Herd. Come on, Huff. Let's go, Herd, baby. Come on, baby. Let's go. Guys, we'll let you go in. Thank you all so much. We appreciate it. All right, everyone. Uh, so a couple more fans that are now making their way into the stadium. Uh, as you can see, here we go. Yep, a little bit more green in this sea of red that we're seeing here. Uh, Keith, Jimmy, we're going to send it back over to you all. We'll check in with a few more fans uh, because now we are just minutes away from seeing these two teams meet up once again. Thanks so much, Taylor and Andrew. You know, there's some familiar uh, faces on the home sideline today, Keith. Todd Goble is the running backs coach and special teams coach for the Wolfpack. This is his fourth year in Raleigh. Heard fans will remember he coached wide receivers and special teams at Marshall from 2005 to 2009 and also served as a recruiting coordinator. And Jimmy, West Virginia native, former Mountaineer defensive coordinator Tony Gibson, also on Dave Duran's staff. In fact, Coach Gibson had two different stints in Morgantown from 2001 to 2007 and again from 2013 to 2018. Finish as the highly thought of defensive coordinator there. He's doing it here now. He knows the Herd's offense starts with Cam Fancher and Rasheen Ali. Yeah, the, those two players are really good players. Uh, obviously, the, the quarterback is able to keep plays alive with his feet. Uh, he, he looks to run uh, before he throws, So, but we have to do a great job in the back end of plastering our coverage and, and getting guys to the ball. So the Herd and the Pack have played five times before. NC State has won all five. Most recently, they played in Huntington for the only time in the series. In 2018, NC State won 37-20. And by that same score in Raleigh the year before. Three games in the 90s. The Herd lost in 95, 33-16, 24-17 in 93. And that first game in 1991 was memorable. The Herd led 14-3 with three minutes to go. Gave up two late scores. Marshall's head coach Jim Donovan was so mad at the late game officiating, he chased the officiating officials off the field. Former Marshall and NFL star Mike Bartram remembers it well. That was a game you look back that, yeah, we, we win that game. I think they were ranked in the country. From, were they ninth? I don't remember. I just remember they were ranked in the country. And here's, I remember numerous people in the stands screaming, where are, where are you from? And all this stuff, like, we don't even know where Marshall's at. And I just remember that. And they were mocking us probably, right? So at the end of the game, I think it was a little different. I don't know if they were saying that. But, um, you know, the, the opportunities to, to go out there and just, just compete with your brothers, man, is just something you'll, 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 you'll never forget it. Both of us were at that game. I remember reading the Raleigh News and Observer article the next day. It basically said NC State was lucky to get out of here with a win. Yeah, I was calling the game for WMUL as a student way back when, and uh, the last few minutes of the game uh, felt a little shenanigans were going on, but uh, referees did the job, I guess. There you go. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll talk to some familiar faces here in NC State that you might remember back in Huntington. We'll do that when we come back to Raleigh. Hey everyone, welcome back to our pre-game coverage here live outside Carter-Finley Stadium in Raleigh, North Carolina. Listen, I, I found one fan that would stick around with me because I think so, so everybody was just so excited to get into the stadium. If you take a look behind Matt and I right now, look at the sea of red, but I'm still seeing a few green in there. I heard from Christian Spears, the athletic director for Marshall University, that they sold more than 3,000 tickets there. I can only imagine how many got sold down here because of how big is out of 
Lee Durham, and I've got Matt James here with me to tell me about some of that and the excitement of seeing everybody here. Matt, it's it's kind of been at that tailgate area. It was like a big reunion, yeah. seeing everybody yeah, get no. together. I know there's a sea of red behind us, but it felt like a home game it over is. there, right? Um, we had hundreds and hundreds of, of folks show up. This is also kind of a mecca for Herd alum, um, finding out there's so many people in Raleigh uh, that represent and support Marshall. It's, it's just been a fun weekend. It, you know, we've been here for a couple days last night. We had tons of folks. Their fans have actually been pretty nice, too. Yeah, I know, right? Nice. For the most part, that's all we're getting is booze. But um, so, well, <laughs> so I hope that wasn't on. But um, it's been a fun day, and uh, just so proud and happy to see all the representation from our school. Right. Yeah. And and you said, I mean, for the most part, everybody has been very supportive. Yeah. You know, um, until the last. Right. Time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> it's getting close to game time. Yeah. We're about ten minutes away now. Yeah. So the, I think I think the excitement and uh, the feelings are really getting there. Um, but. Talk about uh, the turnout that you've had. I mean, that, that tailgate was incredible. I mean, you, you really had a great showing, and yeah. you got a lot of people here. Honestly, everything's moving in the right direction at Marshall. I call it the Brad Effect. It's the first alum to lead us, and so everybody wants to be a part of what's going on. And so, really, we're just bringing folks together. We've got a unique story at Marshall. I think that is what unites us, everything that happened back in 1970. And so, there's just a spirit about folks that are in the Marshall family. Uh, win or lose, we show up. Uh, but today, we're going to get a big W. That's what I'm predicting. Well, it's certainly been a great atmosphere. Matt, thank you so much for joining us again. Always appreciate it. Keith, Jimmy, I'm going to send it back over to you all to give us a closer look at this uh, matchup. As we are now just minutes away from seeing kickoff for this big game. Thanks, Taylor and Andrew. We'll certainly check in with you two in our post-game coverage as well. You know, there'll be plenty of Marshall fans around Carter Finley Stadium today. Yeah, Jimmy, and at least two dressed in red who root for Marshall every weekend, except today. The Wolfpack doesn't just run in football season. Over at the daily practice facility, NC State hoops, going through the paces for Kevin Keats. <laughs> It's 15 of us. It will soon be 18 in the ACC, um, which you know I think is the best conference in college basketball. And to have the opportunity to be the head coach here and you know be able to to lead NC State is a great thing for me. And we're excited about it. I'm going into year seven and have had some great success. But Keats and Director of Basketball Operations Steve Snell have football on their minds this weekend when the Thundering Herd comes calling. Both ran with the herd basketball program back in the day. It's my year 35, but I always tell everybody one of the best jobs they ever had was Marshall. And, you know, the herd's going to travel, and they're, and they're very good as always. So we got, our, we got our hands full this weekend. I'm a herd guy, except for two hours on Saturday. I mean, three hours on Saturday. But uh, it's going to be a fun game, and it's, it's going to be fun to see people I haven't seen in a long time. Coaches take a little piece of every program with them during their travels through different places, and each still has a soft spot for Marshall and Honey. We still have lifelong friends there, and we will for, you know, forever, and, and we always want to see the herd do well. One of my best friends in the world is, um, you know, Greg White. And gave me the opportunity to, to come there and learn so much. And my wife, uh, we had a, such a great time there and just enjoyed our time in Huntington. And um, so it, was, it holds a special place in my heart. Learned a lot. And um, obviously would love to come back and visit at some point. Good to see those two again. When we come back, keeping the herd brotherhood alive. We're back at Raleigh after this. One thing about this sport, Jimmy, is it brings people together, and the relationships that players make can last a long time. Several Marshall players making sure that football indeed is a game for life. College football players often talk about the brotherhood, that intangible connection that keeps them close long after their playing days are over. At Marshall, it has a name, Herd Brothers. On this day, they're honoring former Marshall Hall of Famer Carl Lee. For the former three-time NFL All-Pro, the We Are Marshall movie only reinforced what he knew all along. And I saw it, and I realized what I was a part of. All of the accolades past that truly did not matter to me. 
There are other famous Marshall faces gathered for lunch on a Thursday afternoon. 13-year NFL veteran Mike Bartram and Red Dawson, who helped keep this program alive after the plane crash in 1970. Just heard fraternity is something special to them. So I was fortunate enough to play in the league a few years, play with guys all over this country from Ohio State to D3 to D2 it doesn't matter I played with all of them and there's none more special than Marshall there is not I've heard the stories I've still talked to a lot of the guys um, but it's a very special place it's also special to Jared Turner former Marshall player from the 90s he suffered a catastrophic injury serving his country in Iraq in 2009 18 days before he was supposed to come home that her brotherhood is real to him I was blown up after I kicked the door in. It was booby trapped, and uh, it's been 12, 13 years worth of surgeries. But um, it's been uh, at, at times when I struggle, it's these guys that uh, uh, that have come. And and the good thing is the different eras. You know, we've got Carl Lee here today, and we've got uh, Tony Bowen and guys that played, and then the guys that played after us. And so um, it's. Uh, it, your teammates are never as important when you're playing as they are 20 years down the road when the real adversity sets in. There are lots of laughs and stories, some exaggerated, of course, proving that close really does count at Marshall. Jimmy, a tight-knit group indeed, and a worthy, worthy cause, man, for sure. Some great individuals we've uh, covered and we've been around.